Hey, good morning. Epele Antibanke, Pastor Beauty, how are yeah. you doing? I'm great, thank God. Awesome, awesome. Good to see you. Good to have you. Bele, how is our bad library go doing? We are good, though. We are, we are having awesome. a here. You, you say you're having what? A program. Awesome. I know I saw something on Facebook, but it was just like it was an introduction to library, but I didn't, it didn't show any program. So what program are you holding? It's not really nice for um, a group that is serving a program. So oh, right. we are in the library. All right. All right. It's well. It's well. Hey, uh, bless your heart. Uh, so, I mean, we, 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 we started on verse 48 and 49 of Daniel chapter 2 yesterday, which are the last two verses in chapter 2. And it just showed that Daniel was rewarded for the revelation he gave. And also his friends who prayed along with him were rewarded, you know. And what jumps out to me is the fact that our God is a rewarder. You know, so we started looking at that yesterday. I just wanted to continue on that and to say that God is not just a rewarder, but because he's a rewarder, he's a transactional God, right? When we relate with God, God does transaction. If we take transaction away from our relationship with God, we would not understand God. God is a transactional God. You know, but the scripture bring that before, more than any other thing is Isaiah 45, 19. He says, I have not spoken in secret in a dark place of the earth. I did not say to the seed of Jacob, seek me in vain. I, the Lord, speak righteousness. I declare things that are right. God says, I did not say that you should come and seek me in vain. There's a reward for seeking God. There's a reward for serving God. It's a reward for following after God. And that reward is not just in heaven. Heaven is a giving. <laughs> heaven is a giving. So we are just talking about heaven. We're not starting about that reward yet. This was God talking to Jacob, talking to Israel, right? So we're talking about that. It's not just the heaven part of it. Heaven is a giving. Other than heaven, there is a reward. There is a, there is a reward. There is a pride. There is a, there is a as it were, there's a, there's a compensation for following after God. There is something to be gained from following after God. When once we take that away, we, we, we stop serving God. We are serving something else but God. God is saying he has not called us to serve him in vain. There is something we get by serving God. There's a differentiation that comes to our life just because we are serving God, right? And one of that comes again in John 10, 10. It says the devil comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And he will have that his way with people that don't know God, people that don't know the principles of God, people that don't know the way of God. The devil is as a free course in them. But we that say we have no God, there is something that we receive because Jesus Christ says, I have come that you might have life. You might have life and everything that life represents. Right, so anything that we're getting, we have to ask ourselves, is this life? Right, he says, He has come that we might have life, and not just have it all, not just by the it, it, a life that we get by chance. He says, that We have come that we might have life in abundance, right? In abundance, not one that hey, I have life, nobody knows about it. No, he's saying it's a life that everybody would see, it would be apparent to everyone. He said, I have come to that they might have life, not just life. Oh, but have it in abundant measure that it cannot be hidden. It's plain to, to even the blind eye can see it, right? So if we're not getting that kind of life, then there's a problem, right? It, 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 there's a problem with the transaction. There's a problem with the relationship. You know, either God is a liar or we're not fulfilling the requirement to get that which God has to give to us, right? Let's continue. Thanks for praying. Just like we're sharing in the morning, just trying to close out chapter two of Daniel. Uh, God is a rewarder, and we said God is a transactional God. I know some people, we, we make fun of that sometimes if it's not done right, 
But the truth is God is a transactional God. God wants us to be rewarded for everything that we do in walking with him, in serving him. There's a reward. And God wants to reward us, right? You know, that was a problem the prodigal son, the elder brother of the prodigal son had. He was so righteous. Oh, he's waiting for the day the father will give him. Oh, he's the younger brother that is the wayward one. He asked for his own thing. It was just... Uh, uh. But that is not a reality. We need things. We need things. By virtue of being in this life, we need things. We need things. We are not, we being deprived is not righteousness. Righteousness is having all that we need and showing forth the glory of our God. God says we should let our lives shine. Our life does not shine by poverty. Our life does not shine by being deprived. Our life shines when we our needs are met. That is what glorifies our God. He says, he is our shepherd. We shall not lack. Jesus Christ says, either to you are not asked, ask that your joy might be full. That is how we glorify God. It's not by, all right, I'm a righteous person. Uh, I don't have, I'm okay. You are not okay because you're not glorifying God. God wants to give to us. Right? And that's what we see when Jesus Christ says, ah, don't be like the unbelievers, oh, the way they are anxious or the way they pray. Seek first the kingdom of God. What is the kingdom of God? Is the way, is the place where God rules. Where does God rule? Is the place where God's boundaries are respected. There's a reward for respecting God's boundary. There's a reward for serving God. There's a reward for doing things the way God said it should be done. And that's what we see all over scripture. Even though Joseph was in captivity, yet they, it was evident that God was with him. How? He was prospering. Even though he was not in his own country, he was prospering. Everything that they gave him to do, they just saw it was working. It was different. God differentiated him out because he was serving him. Right? Every level you find yourself, people should be able to see the hand of God in your life. They are not seeing it. You are not serving God. No. I don't know where you are, whether you are serving your church or your pastor. But if people should be able to see the hand of God in your life, irrespective of the level, place you find yourself. Whether you're in Nigeria, you're in UK, there's no excuse of Nigeria. Whether it's, oh, it's because I'm in Nigeria. Oh, it's because it's Buhari's uh, regime. Oh, it's because of the exchange rate. Oh, there's no excuse. Though. Everywhere we find ourselves, God wants his hand. God wants to be revealed at every stage, every level of our life. And the only way we can do that is knowing the kingdom of God, knowing his righteousness, knowing the way the kingdom operates, knowing the truths of God, knowing the laws of God, knowing the principles of God and walking in them. When you walk in them, God said, I have not called you to serve me in vain. There's a reward for doing things God's way. God's way is not the way to be deprived. It's the way to be rewarded. He says, give and it shall be given. You know, Jesus Christ did not say, oh, give money. Oh, give service. Just says give. The word give they can be replaced with serve. Serve. What did Daniel do? There was a need. He prayed about it. God told him. He got rewarded. Right? That is God's principle. That is God's way. God wants our joy to be filled. God wants to glorify himself to us. He is our banner. And if it's not a banner over poverty. It's not a banner over a deprived person. If it's our banner, his hand should be visible in our life, right? His hand should be visible in our life. It's not because we're wearing, it's not by wearing gold, though. it's not necessarily an outward adorning. But if God is with you, people would know. You don't have to shout about it. You don't have to pray in tongues every time. You don't have to wear white clothing. If God is in your life, people would know. It's, it's, so people can see, people can feel it. And that's what God wants us to. God wants us to carry into every area of our life, every place we find ourselves, right? And that's what Jesus Christ was saying in, in, in John 8, 32 also. He says, when you know the truth, the truth that you know will set you free. It will set you free from everything that limits you, whether it be poverty, what, whatever it is. All you need to do is know the truth. That's a parallel to also knowing the kingdom of God and his righteousness. When you know God, when you know his truth, you will be set free. God's hand will be visible in your life. I mean, that's the life God wants for us. I mean, be all ours in Jesus' name.
Amen. <laughs> My time is door is gone. Anybody wants to add anything to what I said? Pastor Shego, anything to add? Yeah. I don't want to put me on. Okay. It's fine. All right. All right. No, that's okay. Thank you, sir. I see, I see you in the market. <laughs> or somewhere loud. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Uh, Auntie Ronke, anything? Nothing to add. Thank you for everything. Thank you, man. Thank you, man. Pastor Beauty, anything to add? Oh, no, no. I'm good. <laughs> Thank God. Yes, yeah. sir. Yeah. Auntie Banke. All is well. Amen. Good Amen. job. Thank you, ma. Thank you, ma. Thank you, ma. All right. Let me let you go then. God bless you all. Thank you. Have a great remaining of the afternoon. See you tomorrow, God willing. Thank bye. you. Yeah, bye. Thank you, pa. Thank you, ma. Bye. 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 bye.